Pricing in Dynamics 360 Vive can get very complicated very quickly. So you can have different customer requirements that, that, uh, that you have to create complex rules to apply using trade agreements to get all, all the different pricing correct. So it's important to have uh, sort of a base and understand where the different pricing is coming from so you can set it up where it's easy to maintain as well as accomplishes all of the customer's goals around pricing. So we're gonna take a look at today is the different, a couple of different trade agreements and, and how I generally look at pricing when I'm first setting it up to at least get a base level. You generally have to expand from here, but just kind of get some base down uh, so to, to give you an understanding where the pricing might come from. So there's a couple of different steps that I follow. The first step I do is establish a base step. So what we're gonna do here is, you know, we're gonna go into the release product and I'm gonna show you where that base step is established. So let's go ahead and take a look at the initial setup of that item here. So I'm gonna go into uh, release products in the system. So product information management release products. And the item number that I'm gonna use is, is 42993. This is a water pump. Uh, water pump recently went out on my Jeep TJ, so I have to buy a new one. We'll see that uh, if I go down to the cell tab, I've got a base price of $80. Then I've gone ahead and added a line discount group of WP for water pump. So this is our fallback position here. So if I go, I don't have any other trade agreements on it now. So if I go into the cell tab, look at trade agreements, there are no trade agreements on it at all. So no other pricing uh, is taking effect on this. What we should see when we go over to the sales order, if we go ahead and add a line and we'll type in the uh, number and we'll see that it comes up as our $80. So that, so that matches. Now that we've established our base price on our item, what we want to do, we may have pricing that varies by region. So it might be site where, you know, warehouse specific, that sort of thing. It's still sort of a base price, but you might have warehouses over here that have, um, have a certain price on them in the West, you know, West coast versus East coast. So let's take a look at how we can use the, um, use the trade agreements to set up regional pricing. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell and we're going to go into tra create trade agreements. So if you remember that base price is, is kind of across the board. Now, anybody that pulls up that item is going to get that $80 base price, but let's go ahead and create an override for that. So we'll, what we'll do on this, we'll use a sales price adjustment trade agreement. So we'll go and click on sales price adjustment. We're going to go to lines. And we'll go ahead and, so I want this to apply to all customers, but I could select a certain group of customers or I could spe specify a specific customer by choosing table. For this example, we'll, we'll choose all customers. The product code on this one, uh, again, I have the same option. I can do all items, a group of items or a table of items. Um, you know, I wouldn't really want to do it for all because I don't want to set the same price on all my items. But for this example, I'll use a table and I'm going to specify my a 42,993 item. And all I have to do is go over here in, in the amount in currency. Let's just say if in site, uh, let's go ahead and put our warehouse in site, uh, we're warehouse 24, which is site two. We'll go ahead and put in, um, instead of $80, we'll put in um, 90. So at site two, warehouse 24, it's gonna be $90. We'll go ahead and post that. Click OK. So if we take a look at the trade agreements now in the in the release product, we'll see that we have one trade agreement for item, you know, customer all, one item for warehouse two or warehouse twenty four site two for ninety dollars. So let's go back to our sales order. We'll take a look at that one. So let's go ahead and remove this line. We'll just add it again and add line, and we'll put in our our number and pull that up, and we'll see that now our unit price is ninety dollars. If we change this warehouse, remember we only specified this for um, Warehouse 24, but if we say, if we change that to 11, we'll see that the unit price goes back to $80. So that's kind of how we can control the price by region. Now, the next step we want to take a look at is our customer override. So we've kind of got a base price now on our item. We've got our base price by region, by warehouse, but now there, we may have some customer variances. So we may want to give a customer an extra percentage off of an item, or maybe if they buy a quantity of items, you wanna give a percentage off. So let's take a look at how we can use our trade agreements, a different type of trade agreement now, to establish those discounts. Now, if we go back into our item, remember we just we just added a, a warehouse two, uh, sorry, warehouse 24, site two. It was $90, the base price is $80. But let's say we have a customer, our US003 customer, that we want to, uh, for water pumps, we wanna give them a 10% discount for quantities, if they buy a quantity from one to five, but maybe from greater than five, we wanna give an extra 5% discount on that. So let's go ahead and take a look at our trade agreements again. So we'll go to create trade agreements, we'll do new. And this time the trade agreement type we'll use is the discount. 
trade agreement. So we'll select discount. We're going to go ahead and hit lies. And on this one, we're going to, we only want to specify this for the specific customer of US003. So I'm going to specify table and I'm going to go US003 on the account. And instead of specifying each individual item, I'm going to apply this by a group. So I'm going to use my group and that's my, my pricing group that I added to the item. And the pricing group that I had on that water pump is a WP. So I'll select my WP. And on this one, I'm going to put in some uh, discount percentage. So I'm going to put in a 10% discount. And I want this to take effect from, from, from basically one up until the quantity of five. Okay. So if you buy zero from, from anywhere from one to five, it's going to give me a 10% discount. But let's say we want to uh, give an additional discount. Um, if they buy more than that. So I'm going to do this, do the same thing. I'm going to use the same customer, US003. Uh, actually, just type that in for us, 003. And I'm going to do it for the same group because I want to do this on all water pumps. Put WP in there. And on, on this time, I'm going to do from five. And then I'm going to leave the two blank. So this is basically from five and greater. It will, will do this. Anything greater than five, it's going to apply this to. So I, I still want to have the 10% discount. But I also want to give them an additional five. And I'll talk about the math behind that in just a little bit. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and post that. And we'll say, okay. Now let's go back and we'll take a look at our, our, our view trade agreements here. So we go to view trade agreements. So when we look at this, we have our base price of $80. For warehouse two, or sorry, warehouse 24, we have our price is $90. For US003, from zero to five, a person zero to five, we're going to give a 10% off and then from five and greater, we're going to give an extra, we're going to give the 10%, but we're going to give an extra five on top of that. Okay. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So we're back in our sales order. Let's go ahead and add our line again. We're going to put in our item number, our 42,993. And we'll see that from, for, and this is the account number is US003, which is for us wholesales. We'll see that now that I get a, I get a discount percentage here. So it's going to take the 90, take 10% off. It's going to give me $81. Now this goes all the way up to four. So I, I said anything from, from one to between one and five, it's going to, uh, or between zero and five, sorry, is going to give me 10% off. Now, as soon as I hit in five or anything greater than five, you'll notice that that goes to 1450 is the discount percentage. So I can do that any, anywhere up to, you know, I can just keep entering, I, I can do a hundred. It's going to just keep giving me that 1450 discount percentage. So let's talk about how that dual discount is calculated. So we added a 10% discount as discount one and a 5% discount as discount two. Let's talk about the first line. So if we had, if the item was $90 and we sold 10 of them, that without any discount, that's going to be the price of that's going to be $900. Okay. So in the next line, if we take, um, our 10% off, so that was our zero to five example, but let's just let's just assume it was zero to 10, just to make the math e easy. If we're gonna sell a quantity of 10 for 10% off, that's gonna give us, um, the unit price is gonna be $81, because uh, that's 10% off of 90, $90, $81. $90, so multiply 10, that's gonna give us a total price of $810, okay? So if we want to take an extra five off the, so what that discount does is, is like an extra five. It's not a, it's not a accumulated five. It's an extra. So what it, the system does is it first calculates the discount one, which is the 10% off. It gives us the $81 and then it calculates a 5% off from the, from the $81, which is going to give us 7695. Okay. And so when you combine those together, you get that 14 and percent discount there. So that's where that's coming from is that discount piece there. I will say generally, I like to use a base price and a discount price for customers where the override, I don't, you can specify individual prices for customers and that you do have to do that sometimes, but I find that difficult to maintain. If you think about it, if you're getting prices from a vendor, you, if you have it, everything set up as a discount, you can apply that pricing as a vendor for, for, for the item and then use discounts to calculate the customer's price as a discount off. And you're not having to update the customer price every, every, every time you get a, you know, a vendor price update. So I like to use the discounts on there. Again, it doesn't fit in all circumstances, but that's just kind of the way I like to go. As I mentioned before, pricing can get extremely complicated in Dynamics 365. So it's very helpful to break it down into buckets like I've done, you know, break it down into sections, you know, what is your base price? You know, what is your regional prices or what, how is that calculated? 
and then get down to your customer level. So regardless of exactly how you do it, that's kind of where you want to start. You want to start big and then, and then move down further and further. So if you do it that way, you can kind of keep it straight in your head and, and make sure, you know, do lots of examples, set up lots of things in the system so you understand how it's working. If you do that, you can kind of keep things straight in your mind and, and have, a, have a more successful implementation of pricing in Dynamics 365. So I hope you found this useful. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.